Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Jim Walmsley after his course record setting win at the 2018 Western States 100. How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? All right. What are your What is your key emotion takeaway a day later or 12 hours later? Key emotion takeaway. You know, just, I mean, just thought. Yeah. What What do you take from this? Yeah, I don't know. It's a lot to process. Uh, it, it's insane. It's just a really rewarding day yesterday um, on many different levels. Um, it's pretty cool. Rewarding? Is there any feeling of relief or like? Not too much. I feel like I didn't put as much pressure as the past two years to, to just go out there and crush it. And yeah. of just knowing like I put that pressure on me in 2016 and 17 and then just like, well, you're walking home empty handed or like <laughs> a DNF is, is pretty hard to take. So um, I didn't feel as much self-pressure this yeah. year, I think. And, I mean, part of that self-pressure was not only self-imposed, but intentionally self-imposed, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 2016 yeah. was a, a bit. I mean, kind of just a little bit of, like, a new buck on the street. And it's like, you got to make a little bit of a name for yourself, maybe, <laughs> and p pick fun at maybe the, the guys that have done it. Um, but uh, 2017 was still, I think, because I felt like 2016 kind of slipped away at a little, just bad luck. And mm -hmm. um, it was just, maybe tried to force it, just in general. But um, this year I made some conservative splits that were weather dependent and slower than course record splits and stuff. And, but um, Yeah, and weather dependent meaning it was, it was hot and going to be oh, hot. Oh, it was like, so hot. So, or, yeah, <laughs> it's good to hear you say that. It was supposed <laughs> to be extremely hot, but then... Um, it felt good. I mean, having been up in the high country tons of years, like Robinson Flat didn't feel awful in the morning. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but, but and, it, and it was dry, it felt like. So yeah. when I was getting wet, it felt like I was drying. But by the time when you're at the river, I mean, it's like 106. I'm still doing all right. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, I was saying like a, a little bit of my Phoenician blood kind of showed yesterday. Yeah, you, you, uh, Born and raised in Arizona, and you yeah. you spent your time in the heat. Yeah, I mean, growing up, we didn't know there was anything different. We didn't know there was like, like as a runner going to college in Colorado, I didn't know that most like runners essentially can be lazy and just run in the middle of the day. We, because we're getting up at four thirty five to go for our runs, like before the sun first comes up. So wow. it's just, yeah, and it's just like, oh, this run, like this sport just got even better because now I can sleep in too. Awesome. Um, well, you said you, you had some pretty conservative splits, and you, I mean, externally looking yeah. in, seemed like through at least 15 miles, you were doing that. Yeah. And then you were still, you weren't ahead, of course, record trim ro until Robinson, but from 15 um, to 30, you were taking time off. Well, I think I came into Robinson, I want to say 332 is what I had. 28, when you took the official time into the aid station. Okay, I was taking splits when I was leaving, gotcha, so I was okay. counting my aid station stops as mm -hmm. part of that. So I think so. You're right on there. Couple minutes, but you had stop. been further off the course record earlier, and you're sort of yeah. Already, I've, made... I've been way under at that point, and um, yeah, I kind of hit up splits. I think uh, what was it Duncan Canyon? I had I was supposed to try to hit two twenty nine ish, and then three thirty one, and then like four twenty nine, something like that, and through so that would have put me. Dusty Corners um, would be the next crew, and it was just, uh, I felt like through Dusty Corners, I was just real conser like conservative, and I wasn't nipping chunks at that point. Yeah, um, you, were, you were slowly anything. pairing away I, under course yeah, record, but, but not. But then even Dusty Corners, I know, like, heading into the big canyons with uh, Devil's Thumb and Michigan Bluff, like, I think that's what chewed me up the most last year, is pushing that too much and mm -hmm. forcing it. And I think I probably ran just as fast as last year sort of thing, but it was just so much more controlled and there was no overheating. And so when I got through that and legs were doing good and I can run Volcano Canyon really well, it was just like, it's going to be 2016 running through Forest Hill. Like, Ethan Newberry, get your camera ready. <laughs> you're you're going to be floating yeah. down that pavement. Yeah, and, and Cause it, it felt pretty good. Yeah, I mean, looking back at last year, seeing you at Michigan, on that same exact spot on the climb, yeah, it wasn't like, the same. you were working. Yeah. Like you might have been going the same pace, but there was a total different yeah. approach. Yeah. It, it was just, last year was different. Um, yeah. This year was cool because a lot of takeaways from it were like 2016, where it was just kind of a bit of a magical day. But in a career sort of thing, you, you don't know if you can ever replicate that again. Like you can replicate good races mm -hmm. and stuff, but that kind of like 
special special it really days. feels like that yeah yesterday felt so like it's not one like you run that and you're like oh i'm gonna try to come back next year and run 14 10 i mean well i mean so i'll, I'll give it to like weather yeah I'll, give course, me a good yeah. weather day and we'll, we'll if, take a crack again if it was sure, at 81 but... or 82 degrees they'd forecast for yeah, the, two weeks know. ago i i just uh <laughs> looking at the weather forecast here sucks yeah you, the more you look at it, every time it just bumps up. And bit. then you're like, ah, oh, that can't be right. I got to check it again. It bumps up. And you're just like. So just stop checking the damn weather, Jim. Yeah, I'm making it worse. So, <laughs> um, uh, But it did feel like a magical day. It's not like you're just. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm no, unbreakable, like, unbeatable. No, like, well, but, but. I mean, eventually in the race, you feel that because yeah. you just feel positive momentum mm -hmm. going forward. And then, I mean, now I've done so much homework on this race that. I know the splits, I'm like, in, unless I, I mean, it's totally possible for me to crack like that. Like, I'm, I, I didn't take anything for granted, but as I was move, moving positive and forward, it's just like, I know no one made time up on that split. I know no one made time up on this split, but it probably wasn't until Koi Road Aid Station where, like, I was actually act, like able to calculate where I was. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, um get to point rocks because those five mile sections after the river are long and mm -hmm. hot so uh once you get to pointed rocks you kind of know the aid stations start coming and then that's where i started to really get a bit hungry was it sort of like the reverse of checking the weather you like kind of started checking in on yourself and each time you're like oh this is good this uh is good. yeah it was positive i mean i just I don't, I don't know how but it just didn't feel like many low moments or any and there was just always energy to to keep kind of a little bit on the gas pedal and that's usually never the case <laughs> i mean even like sonoma earlier this year like yeah. last eight miles or so i was like i'd really like to be done now and and like i'm hitting in the 40 miles yesterday and it's just all right we got gas to play mm -hmm. with it's, it's sweet and it's just a yeah it's a cool take You're going to the tank and yeah was there I, I don't know time. how to explain it it's just uh yeah it's cool nice so you're doing that, you're crushing the course record, and all of a sudden you're like basically pointed rocks, and uh, there's the bears. I didn't. Well, I <laughs> didn't know I was necessarily uh, crushing the course record. I thought I'd still have to really fight for it yeah. just to like nip mm -hmm. it by a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so I, I guess the best way to explain it is um, off of Quarry Road, where you make, where I missed the left turn in 2016. Um, Nail, I think I had people like literally, like there were two people there, like it's very nice, but it kind of messed up my, I've always envisioned doing a little, like someone just watching, not necessarily being as like uh, hands up, like don't go this way, <laughs> which was very nice of them and I do appreciate that. But I always envisioned like people kind of watching and then being able to like do a little jab step past that turn, like ah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, eh, eh, it's more a laugh for myself. Like totally, if, yeah. if, if, if no one was there, it would be like a joke I would have just with myself out in the race, like. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah. Fine. But um, yeah, I made the left. You, you go up the little scrambly climb mm -hmm. and then you make a right to like get back on the, the flowy trails there. I make the right and just, uh, you could tell you just scared two little cubs straight up a tree right on the trail. They're like, on the trail. Like, yeah. like the tree is as close to the trail as you could get. Mm -hmm. Mama bear is right there and mama bear is not going anywhere. I mean, I think something got released. It was 10 minutes. It wasn't 10 minutes at all. That, that's a report that had been passed on to us from <laughs> Nico and someone else. <laughs> no. But it was like two or three minutes or what do you want um, to say? Even that. I mean, it, what it feels like and what it is, is especially in that situation when just probably adrenaline's high, um, is very different. But it couldn't have been more than two minutes. I would okay. say it was at least a minute because I was yelling at it. I was trying to throw rocks over in that area to try to scare at least, uh, the, the cubs didn't bother like worry me as much i think they climbed pretty high <laughs> but um uh yeah and then eventually like i was just i think being aggressive enough with my voice that the mama bear was a bit hesitant and i was like all right i'll just sneak past it and i was i i'd say i was 10 to 15 feet away from it when i was just like just staring straight at it and just like don't come at me and then it it was nice enough to let me go and then we, we finished so the job did, from there so how did you deal with the adrenaline of that because like two years ago well, you had to get the river crossing yeah, i'm sure that like so, jacks so with the, your race i, mean, like, I mean the closest thing i had was like the grand canyon the mountain line down in the box canyons of like um i think i got a huge adrenaline lift from that 
But this one, I'm like, oh, this should give me an adrenaline lift. Like I even thought about it. And like at that point, there's no more adrenaline to give. Like, <laughs> um, no, nah, I, I was, it was actually fairly steady from it. Um, I mean, you'll hear a bear chasing you. It's not like it can just gracefully go through the forest. So no. uh, it wasn't you, chasing. You knew you were clear. Yeah, and yeah. Just an impediment for a minute yeah. or two. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite moment from yesterday? Or, you know, experience or whatever? Oh, crossing the river. <laughs> Finally doing the river. And then, like, just hanging on the rope with two, ha two hands at the time. And, like, I think I remember losing bottles down the river uh, in 2016. And last year, I didn't get a chance to go across the river, even though it was boat year. Yeah. But, like, I was really looking forward to that. Um, and Chris Thornley, who... Craig Thornley's brother and then owns Squirrels Nut Butter, he, he's in charge of the river crossing and the yeah. raft, and he's like the safety raft there. Yeah. And like, I mean, we talk about it all the time in Flagstaff, and it was just like. He did make floaties for you last year. He did. I don't, I was kind of expecting them to do So there. Yeah, there was discussion of them. But um, I, I would have put them on if they were there. But yeah, he made like Squirrels Nut Butter floaties for my arms, like, not going down this year. <laughs> Um, but there was a point where I, I was asking a volunteer to help, like, just kind of poke a bottle back in my holder. But it was really nice because, like, with the flotation device, I just hung on to the rope and you just, I was completely floating and just The flotation down. device and your like, hokas, like your feet were like totally yeah, raised yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So it was like just a really nice, like, yeah. take a deep breath and kind of soak it in. There. And then like two years ago, like, you were, you didn't seem quite with it, as, you know, your normal self yeah, at the river. Yeah. But this year, like, I mean, I the, talked the, to you a couple the, times and you were just, yeah. The biggest difference between 2016 and this year was that, 2016 i started hot blazing like through the river up until the river just crushed it but i felt like i was definitely losing momentum a, a little bit as far as conservative wise of like i got a chance to do something here um but also de definitely suffering a lot later in that race as it went on um and this year it even crossed my mind like yeah if i go four miles off like I, I have plenty to go four miles off right yeah. now. Um, it was just so much more controlled throughout the day that, um, and it just kept building steam and momentum. And this race was really special because like Hoka, Drymax and Cliff Bar all worked with me with like prototype stuff. Yeah. And so I, I just had gear so dialed this well, year. I was going to ask you about really that. Because cool. uh, we actually had a question in the comments of a YouTube video before the race, like what you and the other other Hoka folks were wearing, yeah. but what, what shoes, I mean, um, I, in, in broad strokes, if you can't tell us. Yeah, I, I wore a future, so the Mafati Evo is essentially a shoe. Um, I wore essentially the next generation of them, mm -hmm. and they're just super dialed. Uh, they're, they're really awesome. You can get in out of, get in water, get out of water. They just drain everything. Um, super great. And then uh, it was with a new prototype sock with Dry Max. That's super sweet. Um, sort of a variant of the tri triathlon. It's a sock. variant of the hyper thin and tri sock, and the tri sock has the PTFE that the Max Protection does. But then it really so, fine. Um, but it's really thin. So then again, it goes to not soaking up water, mm -hmm. get in, like get into water, get out of water, and all of a sudden, like your feet aren't just going squish, squish, squish. You're just you're fine. Sign me um, up for those. Yeah. So they're they're super sweet. Um, and then. Yeah, nutrition went great too. Yeah, so that that was a huge step forward because I feel like um, last year at Western States was the first time I had uh, puking problems mm -hmm. and such a distress that way. And it definitely bled into um, the next couple of races I did. And giving it time and then reattacking it from a little different angle. So you've revised um, your not I mean you had some new products you're trying out, but you also mm -hmm. revised your approach a little bit. Yeah, I mean they they made up a new sugar blend that uh, is different from their main hydration, and uh, I think yeah it was getting absorbed efficiently because I didn't feel bloated, didn't feel backed up, and then I wasn't um, I wasn't pushing calories like I always have in the past, um, and then I think yesterday was probably most important to stay on top of hydration more than calories. And then just being aware that you're pounding so much hydration that I, I usually don't take salt tabs, but um, I, I would take occasional salt tabs. Mm -hmm. Usually I'm pretty fine on salt, but um, knowing I was drinking so much and then like the day before they're talking about hypernatremia and you're just like, hmm, yeah, I should be a little cognizant of that. And so I was just taking a little extra salt. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, before the race, did you think like 1430? 
flat no. as possible. And even still, like that should have been impossible on the day. Yeah. I, and that's where just a little bit of the magic came in. Of, like I felt like a possessed man out there of like, I just kept pushing and things kept going and just, yeah, you got to take advantage of those days. Yeah. Uh, where might you be uh, trying to take advantage of days like that in the near future? You got any races uh, planned? Next is UTMB. Yeah. I have a pretty simple schedule so far. Um, so UTMB's next. Uh, Speed Goat was in the question, but it's falling the same weekend as Hard Rock, and I just love being a part of the community at Hard Rock, so it's like, I'm going to go do that um, and be out in Silverton. But um, then North Face 50. Mm-hmm. And then I'm actually racing uh, Oman by UTMB, uh, which I think a... Dylan Bowman and Jason Schlar have both signed up in that too. But um, nice. I mean, the goal during that time is going to be to do uh, North Face 50. Uh, I don't, I've don't. i never raced it. And it's been and like on your like the cusp, but you've thought about it a number oh, of years, it, right? It's like, been a goal to race it the last two years, but then like two years ago, I tried to double back from JFK and mm -hmm. it's just like... <laughs> I just can't run with like guys like Zach Miller, Hayden Hawks, and like with my legs feeling like that, like it wouldn't be fair to me. I felt like, and then last year after reunion, I was just so buried. Like I just ended up taking time off and just hitting a total reset with combined with a little bit of injury, but um, yeah. it was a good reset for me. Nice. Well, I look forward to seeing yeah. it at UTMB. Yeah. And congratulations yeah. on so much. Uh, a tremendous run yesterday, yeah. historic run. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.